I've been out on the road with the uh, ICOM 7300 for about the last three, three and a half weeks now. I've learned a lot about it. And uh, what I'm most impressed with is this touch screen. And we're going to talk about that today on K6 UDA Radio. So guys, I picked up the ICOM IC7300 uh, about a month before I went on my big motorhome trip. And I'll tell you what, it is an entry-level radio, but it is packed with so much technology and so much cool stuff, it has really become one of my favorite radios uh, for motorhoming. Is it going to replace the KX3? Kind of, yes. Uh, when I'm operating in the motorhome fixed, yeah, I'm using this. I use this exclusively. Now, getting outside and, uh, you know, working QRP and, and when I travel abroad, I'm going to take the KX3. I don't need all the stuff with it and I haven't even decided if I'm gonna keep the amp uh, because when I when I travel abroad I generally don't bring the 100 watt amp because it draws too much power but I'll tell you what this is a great little radio for just over a thousand bucks here I mean thirteen hundred dollars uh, retail and you could pick them up for uh, you could pick them up used for about a thousand dollars like I did uh, all day long. Uh, neat little radio. Does it do everything? No. It's only got a single VFO. It has a few things that I wish that ICOM had put in, uh, had put in there. And I, uh, I guess they could put some of this stuff in. Um, the ability to hook up an external keyboard and do RIDI would be very, very cool. Uh, the ability to decode CW and PSK would be very, very cool. And I imagine that those could be software, uh, software driven things that ICOM could put into the radio very, very easily. Today, really what I want to talk about is just this touch screen. Now, what I think is so cool about this entry-level radio is it's almost entirely driven by the touch screen menu system. With very little effort, you could change the display to almost anything you want. Beginning with the setup menu, um, let's take a look at tone control. Very impressed. You have separate bass and treble settings for uh, everything from uh, single sideband, AM, FM, and, uh, and CW. Likewise, in the uh, transmit EQ section, you can go through and uh, adjust all your filtering and everything. In the tuner section, or in the split section, actually, you can control all aspects of your uh, of your split if you want to run split. In the tuner section, it has uh, auto switching. You can adjust your PTT, and uh, and then for the RIDI, it's uh, all kinds of uh, all kinds of shifts and everything that I don't really understand. There are lots of other things that you can control, your memo pad, uh, the uh, main dial, the, uh, the mic speed, and that's the buttons on top of the mic, all kinds of, all your notches, everything about this, including calibrating the screen, you can adjust here 
in the uh, settings. Under the connectors tab, uh, you can supposedly pick out, it says external keypad for uh, um, US, or for CW and RIDI, but I don't know if that actually works with an external uh, keyboard. In the display, all kinds of other stuff you can customize uh, your power on, your what language you want to do, and then you could set the time. You can screw with the SD card settings, and uh, then there's all the other stuff that you can do. And what's in the other stuff? Um, there's information, which is the version. That's your CPU version. Uh, Touchscreen calibration. And now I have to calibrate my touch screen. And now that that's done, uh, you can reset an emergency. I don't know what emergency really is. So we'll just go on. Moving into the record function, you can record uh, QSOs, you could record CQs. You could go into the scanning, and this is where you could scan memories. You could scan uh, a certain section of a band, as in VFO. So if you want to scan uh, a particular band or a particular section of a band, here's where you do it. Now here's where it gets really, really cool. I could pull up all my metering just by plugging in that one uh, that one button there and this gives me full metering and I have it set up right now where I've got the waterfall display in there but I can get rid of that waterfall display if I want and just run the frequency and the meters If I decide I want a closer look at the waterfall, all I have to do is press and hold the uh, M scope and the waterfall comes up and now I can, uh, I, I can run that in center or fixed and I could zoom in on a certain section of the band. I can change frequencies with the touch screen or just freeze a, a section if I want. Now, if you like large numbers and uh, in a full suite of meters on your radio, the IC7300 has got you covered. Here I've got power out, ALC, compression, SWR, voltage, the temperature of the rig, and this IB, I don't know what that does. And from the touchscreen, you can adjust how coarse or fine you want your tuning to work as well as defining what the uh, steps will be on your fine tune. When your full waterfall is active, you could pick between which meter you want, which will be this mini meter, and just by touching it, you could pick between all those different meters. By pressing the multi knob to the right of the uh, display, you could pick between power, mic gain, compression, and your monitor and then use the multi uh, knob to adjust them. Now if you're a fan of audio scopes the 7300's got you covered with these really cool audio scopes. Uh, one side gives you uh, kind of a waveform and the other side has got kind of a mini waterfall in there in real time and you can adjust the timing, the level, you can hold it, you can expand it to be the entire screen and get rid of the traditional waterfall if you want. Expanding the audio uh, portion is very, very simple, just a press of a button, and it will also do output. This is a test of the audio. Now, if you wanna try contesting or you're a fan of DXing, Calling CQ is, uh, is tedious and it takes a lot of time. You can record up to eight different recordings 
with different CQs for different bands, contests, whatever you want. Now, if you like all the meters, but you also want to see part of the waterfall, or at least the waterfall in there, you can also set this thing up so you get the waterfall in the top half of the uh, screen, and you can also plug in all your meters so you've got a little bit of everything. Tapping the time up in the right hand corner brings you to a local and UTC clock, which is very handy when you don't have anything else in front of you. Switching uh, modes and filters are just as easy. Just touch the, uh, the mode and that'll bring you up to whatever mode you want. And one of three filters, the three filter sets come up as a uh, predefined filter and they are fully adjustable by knobs. The SWR graph is something that I really haven't been able to get my head around yet. But uh, this evidently could help you uh, map out your SWR on bands or portions of bands. And I'm not really sure how it works. Uh, I've given it a few shots. And uh, this really hasn't seemed so helpful to me. If you like to operate off of uh, memories... The 7300 is able to write memories and uh, you could put in net names and all kinds of stuff. By pressing the function button at the bottom of the rig, you can bring up a full set of controls and these are your controls for all of the hard buttons. So you can operate them both off the touch screen or the, uh, or the hard, uh, hard buttons on the radio. It also gives you control over things like your gain control. Touching the waterfall display will freeze the display and zoom in on a certain section. And if you want to uh, change the portion of the band or change frequencies, just double tap and it'll automatically change the frequency. Decide you want uh, the big number display, well, that's just a button press and you still can have your waterfall display. You can also hold that waterfall display as well as adjusting the speed of your waterfall. Using a slow display can help you chase weak signals. Now, waterfall displays are highly subjective. The 7300 makes it very easy to adjust the waterfall display to suit your own personal taste, whether you want to see a lot of contrast between signal to noise, or you'd like to uh, hunt for those really deep, deep, weak signals. So about half the time we were gone, I had no phone and no internet. One of the fun things about getting back into uh, internet service and phone service was the fact that I got to check up on the channel and found out we not only hit 7,500, but we passed it. So, somebody now is getting the uh, chameleon and one of my patrons is going to get an open spot courtesy of Shark RF. Thank you guys. What I want to ask you guys is a big favor. In order to keep the channel growing, in order to keep things going around here, I need to get the word out about new videos. And QRZ, they're not going to feature my videos anymore because, ooh, they're offended by women in ham radio, evidently. And I don't blame them. That's their business. They've got a business and they, get, they made a business decision. I made a business decision, so to speak, of I'm not going to compromise what I do. This is all about entertaining you guys, number one. And number two, passing along a few tidbits of information 
about radios and operating and everything else. So, what I want to ask you guys is please share this video. Every video that I put out now, share it, like it, put it up on Facebook if you've got a Twitter account, send it off on Twitter, spread the word about, uh, about the K6 UDA channel, keep me growing, keep the channel growing. And YouTube actually looks at views more than anything else. So the more views something gets, the higher it gets ranked, the higher I get ranked, and the more of my videos get shoved into uh, everybody's recommended inbox, whatever that is, on, uh, on uh, YouTube. And because I'm no longer on QRZ, which was the big traffic uh, producer for the channel, I've got to find other ways of getting the word out that the channel's out there. And I know it ain't for everybody. And if this ain't for you, hey, move along. Is this not why you are here? But if it is, if you like being entertained, if you like high quality videos that don't sit around and bore you to death, help me keep this thing going. Consider becoming a patron, uh, pass it along, make, uh, you know, make this thing you and I together are going to make this channel a success. Anyway, guys, that's all I've got today. If you like this video, again, give it the big thumbs up down there. If you haven't already hit the subscription button, hit that subscribe button. That does help me. And uh, we'll see you next time. I'm Bob, K6UDA, and I'm out of here.